Hello everyone. In today's chess video, we will be seeing a highly instructive chess game where world champion Magnus Carlsen demonstrates his chess powers in a game against Dimitri Andrykin. This game was played in the 2015 World Blitz Championship and if you are a King's Pawn player, then I truly recommend checking out this game because it has quite a lot of instructive maneuvers. Without further ado, let's check this game. Andrykin opens the game with knight to c3. The Van Geek opening is on the board. Magnus takes some time and plays knight to f6. We have e4, sorry about that. We have e4 controlling the center and here Magnus plays e5. So knight to f3, knight to f3, knight to c6. So we have the classical four knights game and now bishop to b5. Putting pressure on the c6 knight. We have bishop to b4 by Magnus putting pressure on the c3 knight. We have castle's king side, castle's king side. And here d3. In this position, Magnus can continue symmetry with a move like d6. However, he introduces a novelty with bishop takes c3. And even though it looks like an odd move, giving up a powerful dark squared bishop for a knight, Magnus has a beautiful idea in mind which he executes over the board as you will see. He takes c3 by Andreiken, d6. So now that immediate threat is bishop to g4 which will pin the knight and even though bishop to g5 is the best move in this position and dragon plays h3 and after h3 as white can play bishop takes c6 in the future magnus simply play, plays knight e7 and magnus has a beautiful pawn advance planned in mind way before advance when he played bishop takes c3 and that advance will smother his opponent into pieces so what is white going to do? We have rook to e1, adding more support to the pawn, and Magnus plays a6. Bishop to c4, b5, bishop to b3, and now c5. A thematic advance in the Ruy Lopez. However, in this case, the advance is much stronger because there are no pieces that white can play to challenge it. In the Ruy Lopez, there will be a pawn on b2 and there's a pawn on c3. So whenever white plays d4, then black plays c4. White had bishop to c2. However, d4 would be a little too premature because black can just play c4, winning the bishop. So in this position, after c5, and Draken plays bishop to g5. And he is preparing bishop takes f6, which will destroy black's king side structure. And of course, you know what Magnus will play. Magnus plays knight to g6, defending the f6 knight with the queen. This position is a critical position of the game and white has to make a choice. There is only one move that saves white in this position and that is a4, challenging the b5 pawn, but black will still play rook to b8 and white's position is still tough. However, Andraiken plays bishop to d5 and bishop to d5 is a bad move and it's very hard to see why until you see it. We have rook to b8, just getting the rook out of the way, asking white, what do you want to do? We have a4 now, but it's too late. We have h6, attacking the dark squared bishop, and here you see why bishop to d5 was a bad move. White can play bishop to e3 when this bishop was on b3. But as this bishop is on d5, white cannot play bishop to e3 because black will take. And after takes, black will play f5 and black will start attacking the king side with f4. And it's very hard to play this position, especially in the hands of the world champion. So in this position, white has to play bishop takes f6. And after queen captures f6, black takes precedent over the f4 and h4 squares. A fact Magnus will exploit to his advantage. A captures b5, A captures b5, and here knight to h2. The idea of knight to h2 is white wants to play knight to g4 and then maneuver his knight to e3. And in this position, feel free to pause the video for a few minutes and defeat a super grandmaster while I give you a couple of seconds. To those of you who found out the correct move, congratulations. Knight to f4 is a perfectly fine move preparing to launch an attack with queen g5. 
However, Magnus has an even better idea, and that is to play queen to g5. He is purposely, purposefully bringing his opponent's pieces into the game, and then he will start attacking it. And you will see what I mean. Rook to e3, a tempting move because white also not only brings his knight to rook to g3, he is also putting pressure on black's king side. And if black plays a weak move like bishop to d7, then rook to g3 and white is actually doing pretty fine. Queen to f6, white can just start attacking with rook to a7. So, black has to be careful. After rook to e3, we have knight to f4. Preparing queen captures g2, rook to g3, and Magnus plays queen to e7. And once again, Andrake played rook to g3, but he did not achieve anything. But Magnus did achieve one thing, and that was to bring his opponent's pieces on g3. And even though it seems like the rook on g3 is an active piece, it's really not. And it's beautiful how Magnus takes advantage of this. Knight takes d5 is once again a threat, so Andrake finally brings it back to b3, but now king to h7. On pinning, and the immediate threat is to play the move f5, busting open the white center. Knight to g4, we have f5 nevertheless, e captures f5, and after e captures f5, bishop captures f5 is a completely nice move, but Magnus has an even better idea, which is to play d5, and Magnus has four central pawns, and white cannot do anything about them. f might seem like a move that you might want to try, because it seems like you're ripping black's king into pieces, but after g captures f6, this would only improve black structure and c4 is an immediate threat. So in this position after d5, there is really nothing to do here and Dragon tries c4. He wants to open up black's position but this only closes his bishop more. b takes c4, b takes c4 and now d4. Finally closing the position and intending bishop takes f5 and there is really nothing for white to do. And Reagan tries the only possible move here, which is queen to e1. Of course, you want to keep attacking your opponent's weaknesses. And Magnus had seen this variation when he played that queen to g5 move. He wanted this rook to come to g3 because now he can play bishop takes f5 and he's winning the game. Why is he winning the game? What happens to a move like queen takes e5? Black will first deliver a check, king h2. Black will play queen takes e5, knight takes e5, and after knight takes g3, black is only an exchange up, but black's pieces are placed very horribly, and it's only a matter of minutes before Magnus converts this into a full point. So, what happens to knight captures e5? That's an even bigger issue because rook e8, and once again, where is this knight going to go? Black is going to take it, so after knight f3, knight e2 check, Black will simply gobble up the rook and black is winning. So in this position, we have rook to a6. Try and pour some knight into h6 sacrifices, but already as this position is completely lost for white, black has to try something and he tries the best possible move. We have e4 here, of course just advancing, completely ignoring white's threat because there are no threats. And the immediate threat is bishop takes g4 and then e3, which you shall see. We have queen to d2, just attacking the knight, but now bishop takes g4. And after bishop takes g4, you don't want to ruin your pawn structure with h takes g4, and Draken plays rook takes g4. In time trouble, he blunders, but now e3. And black gets a pass pawn. f takes c3, d takes c3, there are no checks, courtesy this knight on f4. Queen to e1, but now e2. And this is a position that I've un never seen before. Having a pass pawn on move 30 and intending to promote it against a super grandmaster like Andraken, that's Magnus Carlsen's strength. King to h2, knight to h5. Now the immediate threat is rook to f1, winning the queen, c3. And c3 is a blunder because obviously everybody can see rook takes b3 is a winning game. But as it's a blitz game, anyone can blunder. And even though this loses this bishop, that position was still lost. You cannot prevent rook to f1. c3 was played. Magnus played queen to e5 check first. 
As Vision Sook, hoping for King H1 because Rook F1 check wins the game, Queen takes F1, E takes F1, promoting it to a Rook is also a checkmate, but and Dragon plays G3. And now, after Rook takes B3, it was in this position on move 33 that Andragon resigned the game, and what an amazing game by Magnus. This is definitely my favorite Magnus Carlsen game, because I cannot remember a game played by Magnus in which I have learned so many instructive maneuvers. If you like this game, please do comment, share, and subscribe. I'll be visiting you with more such videos on whatever happens in the chess world, checking on your wonderful suggestions, and of course, covering our Magnus Carlsen saga. So yeah, stay tuned. Bye-bye.